Hi, it's Jill with Crick Flix, and I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm doing a theme for a baby shower. And this is the baby's nursery. A picture was sent to me. And what she wants is a one foot centerpiece of the whale, of the octopus, a turtle, and a dolphin. The dolphin's up here on this, this bedding. Now, of course, I couldn't do it from this bedding itself because it's not it wouldn't print out right. Um, uh, the, they'd be all blurry. That, that wouldn't work. So what I did is a Google search of a whale, an octopus, a turtle, actually a sea turtle, and a dolphin, and I did clip art in, in my search. And I actually came up with color book pages so that I could make the colors as close to the images. This is what I came up with for the sea turtle. And again, this was a color book. It wasn't a color book. It was a... a just a black and white. Um, it wasn't a color book image, but a, um, I think it was a, I don't know, it was a, some sort of a clip art, but not colored, so I did my trace to get it into my pieces. And this, I have it all grouped together as one, however, each piece of these shells are separate pieces. And when I broke it apart, um, I'll show you there's the dark background, and then this piece when I break it apart, there was the other green from my digital prints. Whoops, I need to break it apart again. And then there was my other green, which was a digital. It's not a solid green. And then there were my other pieces. It was a digital piece of um, digital paper print. Somebody had asked me how I make the shapes and change the shapes and sizes and, and whatnot on, on these digitals. Um, there is no change in the shapes. You flood fill your, your piece. Whatever it is that you're working on, you just fill it with the color. It takes on the shape of whatever color you're working on. If you happen to be watching this video now, if I went into this turtle where I have the pattern, um, I'm going to take a circle and show you real quick. Um, if I have a circle, whoops, let me make this a little bit bigger. And I can't remember who it was that asked me, but again, whoever it was wanted to know how I can change my paper size with the digital print. And again, you don't. It doesn't have anything to do with your paper size. I'm going to open this so you can see it both at the same time, and I'm going to get up to my patterns. And let me go to my greens. Here's my greens. And I'm going to pick, actually, I kind of like that pattern, but this is a pattern that I used on the turtle. And now when I look at it, I probably should have used this one. I may change that to this pattern. Not that one. What one? I just saw one that was more like... Oh, I think this one's fine. Anyway, then if I go up here to where my pattern box is, and I go to Advanced Options, and I go to Scale Pattern, you can make that pattern larger, or you can make it smaller. So... I don't, you know, it's it's amazing what you can do with these these digital prints because you can make them as large as you want. If I wanted a single flat, well, no, that only goes up to 500. You do have limitations. I almost spoke too soon there. But anyway, that's where you would change it. The, the shape of the digital, um, what might be happening is when you're using them, if I go into this digital and I double click on it, it's loading and it's going to come a box. That is, if, and then you can, of course, just drag it or go into your size here and take your lock ratio off and say I want an 8.5 and by 11. And I enter, there we go. That's what I have. Um, looked like it distorted the shape. I wouldn't do it that way anyway. I would always, I would never change the size um, because look at how it distorted the flowers. Um, again, the only time that this would show up as a box is if you double clicked on it. But if you're on an image and you click, it's going to fill that image with your, your whatever digital you're using. So again, there is no reason for you to ever shape, change the, there is no changing the size. Um, it's you would make your piece first, then fill it with your color, then adjust your size of your pattern if you wanted to. Okay, enough of that. Let me get back to what I was doing here. 
Let me delete this out of here. Um, the other image that I had was the whale. Let me minimize this now. I showed you which ones I needed. I tried to find the ones that looked the most like the bedding. This, again, was a black image, black and white, and I did the outline or trace, and then I colored it, and I did my dropper um, in my color here to pick up the colors that this was, and I added my own face to it because the, this particular image didn't have the face, so I added the little pink cheeks, and here is the dolphin. I did the same process. The dolphin is here on the blanket, um, and then here's the whale that I could find the that looked the most like the whale here. None of these are like exactly, but she didn't ask them to be exactly. She just wanted those images. I just tried to make them look as much like the bedding since that is the theme of the shower. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the theme of the shower and then this is the nursery. So I will be filming and showing you how I assemble those pieces. And so I will be back for right now. Um, that's it on this. I can't think there's anything else I needed to say. I think that's it for now. If I have something else, I'll come back again. I'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm back again. Um, I just showed you how I... Oh, I forgot to use that. Um, was doing the project uh, for the baby shower using the nursery... Uh, the baby crib blanket and I can't remember what else was there I think it was a diaper holder and whatever I did that video um, a couple days ago so I lost my train of thought here anyway I here is a picture of the whale I've already got them done these are all one foot pieces and here's the whale and again this is all pulled from that nursery set that I showed you and then here I have the octopus and again he's one foot tall and then here I have the turtle um, what I ended up doing on this is it is for some reason I'm not really sure more white showed than I anticipated and I don't know I was having some trouble with my machines but I inked it I took some um, let me see where it was here it is. It is Versa Magic. It's a chalk ink, and I absolutely love it. And around the edges, because it just had white, I have this in every color. I just went through, and I didn't want to get rid of the white completely because all my pieces have some white around it. But this was just for some reason thicker in areas, and it wasn't that it didn't fit. It's I, I don't know. I have no idea. But again, I just took and inked around it with this. And come on, ink lid. I tell you, my dog, I got the sh door shut because my husband's got the game on and my son is downstairs. Um, and while well, they're working on wedding stuff and it's too noisy and my dog's out there having to run away because I'm not letting her in. Anyway, here's the turtle. And then again, as usual, I will take pictures so you can see a close up. Um, here is the mother. And again, I picked the colors from the theme. Um, she's African-American, and he is, she wanted him lighter skinned, and this is not the normal mustache that I use on him. However, I made, I made it smaller. I had done him before on a mustache theme um, shower, baby shower. So this isn't the first time doing this particular um, Mommy and Daddy. I don't know, there's some goop on there. i got to get my little goo remover. I think I loaned that to my son on his project. And the way that I would stand these would be him standing and her kind of like that, like he, they're holding hands or whatever. You can put them any way you want. But she's holding her purse and her hat. This was from a digital print, and I tried to pick up the colors that are the primary, the blues and things that were on the, the baby Set, the nursery set and I used some liquid pearls to do the headband and liquid pearls around her neck and I did some liquid pearls around her hat and her purse and then him I did his necktie with um, glossy the, the necktie is the same print as her dress 
um, and I did the glossy on his mustache and then I did the liquid pearls down so it looks like the, the, the opening of his jacket and I just added some accents around here like the wrinkles around the arms and the buttons on the sleeves and things because he just looked a little bit too simple for my for my liking so I added some to him um, again this is mom and dad and I'm going to move these aside for a picture and oh I forgot the dolphin and again this was up the bedding and then I made all of the die cuts of the same pieces we have the dolphin the turtle the whale another turtle and the octopus and another dolphin and an octopus and a whale and a whale because I have to do the banner that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to sort these out and there's the turtle and there's the octopus and it's going to say baby boy um, and I can't remember his name it's but we'll see it right now and I picked um, this is my my regular scallop square then this square here I ran it through the cuddle bug um, for the texture and I'm trying to see which file I used to do that it was this this was the texture that I used um, it's kind of a square plaid pattern but I ran all the top layers of the the squares I ran through the cuddle bug and I did more you know sometimes I forgot to forget some of the stuff that I have because I have so much and I don't use it as much as I should I picked four different colors of blues because there's numerous shades of blue between the, the whale and the octopus and and something a little bit more green so here's for the Ba then there's a darker blue for this baby blue or baby boy and this is a different blue it's a little bit lighter than that one and this is more of a teal or really dark teal so it's got a touch of green that I like with the turtle so let me put this one together let me do the baby boy the baby first flip them all over and I think think what I'm going to do no I'm not forget it I was thinking of connecting but I'm going to make them separate and I'm going to put them together with um, Baker's twine and I see that some people put these together and weave and and put ribbon and things through them I don't do that on any of my pieces. I just hot glue it to the back. Um, it. I used to do the punching and the and and winding that ribbon through, but that is really really hard to do. I think very very time consuming, and uh, unfortunately, I would have to. Uh, I would have to change my price because it is a lot to try and weave these in and out of the holes. We'll put, I used to put eyelets and I've done numerous things on them, but anybody that does crafting, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into this making things anyway. Usually when I'm filming, I've already done the vast majority of the work. So all you're seeing is the final assembly. But from beginning to end, people ask me if it, you know, uh, um, that it looks easy, or if not that it looks easy, does it take a long time? And yes, it does. It takes a long time. Baby, and then we're going to do boy. I've got the letters alternating with the four different shades of blue, every other one. They're all laid out in the right order now. Let me take and move baby over here. And... I just knocked one off because it wasn't dry enough to be moved. See, that's what you get for having patience. And let me make sure these are all on here right. 
Yeah, there we go. It's fine. And then I got to decorate them with the little cutouts. That's what these are for. They're going to go on the banner. So we've got boy. Turn these all. I, I lined them up with the edge of my glass top here. And I put them eyeballing it about half an inch apart each letter. Um, and I would say it's, it's, it is a estimated half an inch, but usually I'm a pretty, I got a pretty good eye. Um, and other than spelling, spelling words wrong, uh, I do that often. Um, of course not on purpose, but I have a good eye for distance, but I guess I don't realize when something's backwards. I remember making banners and I had tried to make them double sided and uh, double sided when it's words is very very hard because you can't unless it's well you have to pay attention because doing double sided is real easy to make a mistake that when you go to look at the other side it's backwards but these I don't make double sided do not people hang them on the wall there's no need for the back to be decorated um, let me see oh last night or the I can't remember when the last time I was saying it was a rough day because Kendall had spent the day um, up at the hospital well, it does turn out that she's got um, RSV which is a respiratory um, ailment which I believe she caught from baby sister Isabel and she's got pneumonia she is at home, and they're pumping her full of antibiotics. Um, because her immune system is so compromised with all of this chemo that she's on, unfortunately, it 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 does. She does get sick, um, but she is in really, really, really incredibly good care. She's. Um, and her and her mommy and daddy pay attention for any kind of change in behavior with their acting tired, lethargic, loss of appetite. There's different things that they look at. And Kendall's gotten to the point now where if she's feeling anything, she'll say, "Hey, will you take my temperature?" Because she can, she's not feeling the way she thinks she should feel. It's just absolutely, absolutely mind-boggling how a six-year-old child handles these sorts of things, this sort of thing that they, they know so much. It just blows my mind. And um, this morning, Aunt, my daughter sent me a picture, a text. We we're getting ready for church and she sends me a text and it was a picture of Kendall's breakfast and it was nine syringes full of medications that she's on. And you know, you just, I'm so incredibly thankful that she's going to be fine. But to think of a poor little six-year-old, her breakfast consisted of six different syringes full of, um, between the antibiotics for the pneumonia and whatever other antibiotics and, and uh, the chemo and all of these things. It's, it's very, 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 very hard. It's very hard, but I do want to say again thanks to all of the folks that have been sending prayers her way. Um, just ever so appreciated. You know, um, she didn't get to go to church church this morning, and she absolutely loves to go to church. But uh, her and and Elizabeth. Uh, Isabel, the little sister, who's a year and a half, is the one that's got this. Uh, she's also got this RSV or whatever, did the respiratory. They think that that's where Kendall got it, but we didn't want to infect the nurseries at the church. So the kids didn't go, um, and Kendall was so disappointed because she loves, loves to go. And she didn't get to today. And... She wants to film again. If she's feeling good, she's supposed to stay all night Friday. But of course, it's hit and miss whether she can. It all depends on how she feels. She does get off now. She doesn't have to have chemo, or doesn't have to go in for the spinal chemo 
this week she will get it through her port um, she's but she, she gets a week off and I think they do that because they want them to build up their strength I'm not really sure how any of that works but um, again I'm going on and on but thank you everybody for um, your constant prayers and there's people that you know, some of you people have just absolutely amazed me and humbled me beyond belief. You have no idea. Out of the clear blue, I'll get an email. It's from one of you viewers and a, set, a, a message or an email or wanting to know how Kendall's doing and sending prayers. And and I haven't even met half, well, any of you that have been writing these. And I am so impressed and have restored my faith in humane people, just in people you know you guys have been absolutely amazing. Um, and a lot of you have sent uh, um, packages to, to Kendall. Um, and as a matter of fact, I've got, I don't know how many thank you cards are sitting. My daughter just came to me tonight. We went over there for dinner that I've got to set, get sent out. Um, hoping I have the address that so she gave them to me. <laughs> she assumed I had the address. Can't assume anything with me because that's not usually the case. I don't have half the stuff I need. But anyway, we are ever so grateful for the, the amazing friends that I have made and never met. But you guys are awesome. And you viewers, you send me the most positive feedback and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And somebody just wrote me on a one that I posted today and said how much she missed my videos. And somebody else, I don't know if it was the same person, said they check every five minutes to see if I posted one. Thank you guys all so much. And I'm so sorry for being so behind, but I've got so much on my plate. There we go. There we have the boy. And now... Oh. Gotta finish these letters on there. Let me see what else is happening. What else is happening? E -ero Erolito. Erolito, I believe his name is. Erolito. Yeah. This is the new baby. Okay. And let's do the T and the O. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. We went out to dinner last night to a Mexican restaurant, and there was a, I know I'm going to blow this again because I, I keep trying, I keep doing this, a mariachi, a mariachi, was it? Um, anyway, the three singing and playing the guitars and stuff, and so they came over to our table to sing, and uh, Charlie, the three-year-old granddaughter, was just dancing. Oh, it was so cute. She just dancing away. We went to her ballet recital, and of course she was like a, statue there. She wasn't going to do anything. Um, she didn't like all the on viewers, I, I, I believe. And then when they were done with the recital, she started to dance. Well, then we went out to eat and the band was playing. Came over to our table to play a few songs and she danced her little butt off. So cute. So cute. It's so unreal how becoming a grandparent, the appreciation is so different than it was when you were um, raising your own kids. All of a sudden, it's awesome. It should be grandparents first. That's my feelings on it. You know, because you don't learn to appreciate things until you're, everything starts to go by so fast, and then all of a sudden, um, you're thinking, ooh, boy, did that time go fast. I wish I would have paid more attention telling you if you're if you're a young mother watching this um, savor every moment because kids grow so fast unbelievable and I am babbling as I'm telling you all of this <clears throat> I think I'm losing my voice probably because I talk so much my husband's talk a lot um, these squares <clears throat> are five inch squares with the scalp edge 
and I did get the scallop square image off of a Google search and the square inside is um, four and a half by four and a half that um, I just cut a square on a silhouette. This circle here <coughs> is a three and a half inch. I did the faux stitching around the letters and uh, the, the circle and the letters all a print and cut and now I get to use a turtle. I finally ran into a green one. Um, but again, the this circle is three and a half inches with the faux stitching that I did on the, the cameo. And you get a lot of questions. People are asking me if they can do these things on their sil or their new what are they what's it called? Um, the Cricut Explorer. Don't know the Cricut Explorer Explorer. All I know on that, there we go. Love these colors. Love it. Um, I don't know anything about the Cricut Explorer other than the fact that I've been told by viewers that do have it or are familiar with it is that the limitations are that you can only do an eight and a half. Um, I can do a two foot six centerpiece no matter what size my printer is and no matter what size my, um, I'm using the Cricut, if I'm using the Cricut um, Explorer, I would still be able to make the sizes that I want. However, I'm not going to be doing videos on that because the videos that I do, when people ask me, can I do a video on such and such, the videos that I do are videos on things I make that are orders. I have none of my videos, I shouldn't say none, they're either my grandkids or something, they're always for a reason, they're for someone. So if they're not for someone, I don't do them. I don't have time to do videos on how to do make something that um, using an eight and a half by 11 and trying to piece it together and whatever, I'm not gonna do a video on it because I would never use that because I, I have what I need to make them large. And I again, I just don't have the time to do a video demonstrating how you could do it. Plus I don't have access to the software of the Cricut Sport and I don't know what the new software is like. Um, and I, I don't have any idea. I tried to use it because I thought you could at least kind of like with the silhouette try it out with the freebie, which would make the most sense to me, but apparently not to Propocraft because there is no freebie. You know, you have to buy it. You have to own it to, to practice. And I'm not going to buy it because I will never have a Cricut machine ever again. Um, so for those of you that ask me things about the Cricut, I have no clue. Don't you don't use it, and I have no idea how it works. No clue. There's software, I have nothing. I mean, um, and the folks that do have it love it. I mean, I've, I've seen rave reviews um, on, on people commenting or talking about their, their explore, and they love it, which is, you know, good for them. Awesome, because I want everybody to enjoy what they they have if they, if they do this sort of thing, but couldn't begin to give them any sort of advice on how anything works. Because I don't know. I don't know. And I'm going to make him go in the opposite direction from the first one. And this one I'm not going to try and hold up. It's a little bit long. So I'll just take pictures when I'm all done. What do I need? I need this one. This one, and I'm going to have him going like that. I want them all looking a little bit different. Yeah, I think in the beginning, I don't remember what I, I just did this bit with that video, the screenshot of me doing this design to match that bedding, but I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say. I don't remember. I don't remember. I have no idea what I was just going to say. But obviously it was not that impressive or important because I have no clue, none. And let's see here. And there we go, there we go. And here we go. I don't 
don't have there we go. I don't have a turtle left over. Anybody want a turtle? I got a turtle. Put this up there. Look at my dog. My dog is so dumb. Sorry, I didn't say that out loud. I didn't say that out loud. She sits by the door and barks because the door is shut. It's like it's like she can understand me, or like I have something in here that I'm doing that she's interested in. You know, she just goes in and hides in the corner under the desk. No idea why she insists. Never, never doesn't bother him or anything unless I shut the door. My dogs do not like the doors closed. They don't. They must have heard those sayings. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. And they're they're trying to find out if they can figure it out. Dumb dogs. Um, okay. That's it. So I am going to go ahead and I made a mess down there. Um, take a picture and get this uploaded for you. Oops, all done. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.